Okay, here we are with two variations of the tunnel and you can clearly see that it's really up to your imagination. You can create all kinds of variations. I mean, you can make birds fly through this thing or make the camera slower and let the rat run through it. I mean, seriously, I mean, you can create all kinds of variations here. It's so fun. And today I want to walk you through on how I actually created the animation, but I decided to split this into episodes because there is a problem I have with the uh, material, my favorite material, the cook torrents. I'm currently investigating on a problem I have with it. Uh, I contacted the, the developers and I hope to get an, a response from them as soon as possible. So I thought until then, I would just show you or walk you through how to create the basic motion and uh, of the tutorial here. And yeah, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Hey. Okay, so here you see the template that I've created. I, I don't know if you want to have the template to follow along. It might be a little easier to follow along with these uh, boxes already laid out. The textures are already loaded in here. So these will be the textures and this is the HDR map, uh, if I may show you. So this is the, I don't know how to pronounce it. Please, if you know, comment and correct me. I think it's called Gribble. <laughs> Grabble, gribble, I don't know. We have this texture and then we have this texture here that I uh, use for the specularity. And actually this has an alpha channel. And this is because specularity and fusion needs to be in the alpha channel. Okay, great. So, uh, and then we have this very cheesy HDR map. Ooh. Now I thought hey, it looks kind of like tunnel action in there. Just the colors are wrong, but other than that, it's okay. Okay, so we need a tunnel and uh, to create a tunnel, what we need first is a tunnel. <laughs> Very smart, Vito. And for that, I'm gonna create a shape. Uh, and I put it into this box. I get rid of this. I know you you, you, you like it, but... Uh. So we have this um, shape. And this is going to be a cylinder. I'm gonna make this 30 high. And I'm gonna do the resolution for now to 200, 200, just to get speed. And then I go over to the transformation tab and I rotate this to minus 90. And bang, a cylinder. Okay, so this is our basic object. And the first thing I do is I bring this together with a camera. Hey. And those belong down here. Okay, so I view the camera and I would bring the camera to the begin oops, to the beginning of the tunnel something like this and on the right let's look through the camera so this is how it looks uh, next I thought let's just apply the texture quickly so the gri gribble greeble oh, two e should be like cheese greeble okay so here we go here mm, yeah here we go uh. Wait, what is wrong with you okay so here we go with the tunnel and now, to create the illusion that we are flying through the tunnel without actually flying through the tunnel uh, is to actually animate the texture here. So, and the way we animate this is simply by adding a transform tool. Okay, I need some space. Made it too tight here. Okay, so transform tool. And I'm going to go to this first frame. Let me set the range to 136. This is the range that I decided to loop in. And now transformation, I'm going to arm the center at frame zero. I leave it as it is. And then at the last frame, I'm going to set this to minus 0 0.5. And now you see that the texture disappeared in the 3D view. Here it moved downward. So it means this part here is empty. So we need to simply wrap this around. Okay. If your texture is tileable, you, you can also use the mirror. But this texture happened to be not tileable. <laughs> I was a little bit lazy to make it tileable. But the wrap is fine. It's fine, man. Trust me. Okay, and now if I play it. Hey, already flying through it. We're done. That was too easy, right? Yeah, but you're not satisfied. I know. I wouldn't be. 
Okay, so this is this is not bad though. For the the impression is there, and can make this a little faster or whatever. Let's leave it like this for now. But of course, this not this tunnel now is very straight and boring. We want to make this look more interesting. We want to make make this more uh, more like a roller coaster, you know. So in order to give the impression that the tunnel is not straight, we simply gonna bend it. Bend it. Bend it. Bend it. Nice. What is it? For that. We are not going to use a bender. We use a displays 3D. Yeah, you guessed it. I know. I know. And for that, as a map, we use the background tool. Let me view this. And I hooked the background already also into the shape just to see where our gradient lives. Yeah, as Bob Ross would say. Uh, okay. So now the displacement, if you would use it as it is, the only thing you would do is you would basically displace along the normals, according to the UVs. But we don't want to do that. What I want to do is, and that is one of my favorite uh, features or uh, tools in, in Fusion, I want to use the RGBs. And the RGBs basically stands for the XYZ. Hey, that's like a hip hop song. RGB, XYZ. Here, this X is here. So uh, with red, we will displace on the X axis. As you can see, the whole thing moves over. Okay, and if I switch this to green instead, we move it upwards. Ah, very nice. And if I would set this to blue, we move it along its Z axis. So yeah, but this is not what we want. We, we don't want to use the blue. I will explain to you. So another thing we want to do is we need to create a gradient. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to realign this to 0.5, 1, 0 0.5, 0. And for the size, it doesn't really matter with this one, uh, but I know that the resolution of the texture is 1200 by 384. And because the resolution doesn't really matter here, I'm going to divide this, let's say, by two. We don't need to waste performance here. Okay, so now watch what happens if I adjust my gradient. So I make this red and I make this red here as well because we want the beginning and the end to loop, to repeat. So we need the same colors here. Now in the middle, or let's say here, we change the color to green. And you see already how this thing pops up. Not not pops up, moves up. <laughs> it's like pops, pops out. Okay, here it moves up. Now, as I said with the blue, we don't use the blue now. If you would make this blue, all you do is basically move it along the uh, z-axis and why that looks very interesting like you could make like very steep curves and so it's actually not with this method it's actually not working because it would give the impression of a 2d zoom later on because the texture is moving you don't want to use that what you can do instead is you bring this up to the green and then here make sure that you work in float that's the importance if you work in float you can do this kind of things here you can go into the negative values. Now, negative values, when you are in a 2D uh, viewer or in a 2D world, you don't want to create negative values. They're always bad. However, in the 3D space, this is very powerful. See? So we can mix red to it and shift it over, you know. And okay. So now that we have set up our gradient, what we want to do is we want to animate it because at the moment it's not animated right only the textures animated now it looks like we are going in a roundabout no roundabout is in the city okay uh, whatever <laughs> okay so we want to create the impression that we are moving through a curved tunnel for that we want to animate this or to offset this gradient uh, you can already see if i move this offset we create this motion here this is what we want however you notice that it's not repeating that's very simple just click here and now we go to the first frame we arm this thing here then go to the last frame and we set this to let me see if it was minus two because you want to make sure here that the gradient is also moving towards the camera now we have to see whether the camera is there ah you see now it's moving away from it has the impression that it's moving away from the camera we don't want that we want to avoid this because it will uh, bite with the texture animation so instead of minus two, uh, let's do two. And now we are moving towards the camera. 
Yeah, some scary tunnel here. Okay, now you can see that it's steep here and you're wondering, hey, hey Vito, why is this so, why, why does the tunnel have corners? Tunnel doesn't have corners. Mm, yeah, uh, well, that's because this gradient here is linear. It means, although it looks like it's curved or bended, it's a linear gradient. And to make it smooth, just bring in a blur and blur this up to 200 and use the filter box because this one is faster. Okay, and now we're good. Doesn't that look nice? So obviously you notice that the camera is going off out of the tunnel. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a solution for you to make this automated, but hey, come on, we need to do a hand job sometimes. Yeah, hand job. Okay, but there's one trick you can uh, do to minimize the chance uh, of the camera moving out of the tunnel. And let me show you. So here, I will just simply add a Bender 3D. Bender. I will set it to taper along the z-axis and now uh, I need to view this now I'm just gonna taper it I want to make it smaller at the end of the tunnel this will even increase the uh, sense of distance and here where the camera is it becomes bigger by doing so the camera has more space to move and the chances that it goes out of the tunnel is well lower but you can see we are actually safe yeah. Now, additionally, you could uh, now go to the camera here. Let's turn off the light. Uh, we can go to the camera. And to make the motion a little bit more interesting, I'm going to animate all parameters. Now, I found that the tunnel looks most interesting when the camera is low. Something like this. So you want to get this curve here and this counter curve here. You want you want to want them you want them to overlap. That looks most interesting, really. Uh, something like this, for example. And then you move on. Now here we're moving up because we went very low, uh, so we just counter animate something like this. You see again these two lines, and go in the middle of these two maybe, or just. Oh, good that I saved. Yeah, I have many crashes. I don't know if it's my system or if it's Fusion. It's it's really crazy. Um, I've Fortunately, I saved it, so I will just reload it. I don't know why, but every time I animate the camera using my tablet, I'm not sure if it's the tablet or not, but for some strange reason, every time I do that, I get a crash, and it's really annoying. I'm sorry, uh, but yeah. So let me open this planet editor and see where I was. Okay, I saved without the before I animated the camera. So again, select the camera, animate it. Again, I go down here. If it crashes again, uh, then I will just use the parameters instead. I don't know what the problem is. I'm gonna save. It's very dangerous now. Okay, in the last frame, I won't do anything because we have to make this loopable. Yeah. So what I do is I go into the spline editor, I take all the keys, control and move them to frame. I type it in here, 136. Now I take all the keys, I smooth them and I want to, I don't know if it makes sense. I want to set it to loop and pre loop that way you can look whether it's it loops nicely or not for example i can change this one here like this and then i go to the last frame where i get exactly the same curve and adjust the in curve or out curve <laughs> uh, yeah so now you can see it looks smooth let me check one by one okay so this one as well well you could probably click shift l and then go in here, shift L. Next one, this one is okay. Let's see, we didn't really animate. This is okay. This is also okay. And this looks also fine to me. And let's see, let's check the last and the, or the first and the last frame. And there was no movement. So this thing is perfectly repeating. And let's see if the texture is also doing the same. If we see a jump in here, it's caching. That's why it takes a little bit. Luke, 
You're too close. <laughs> it's like Star Wars. Okay, obviously you can tweak the uh, camera. Uh, I mean, you could uh, also do like this kind of animation. This would make it actually look also very cool. Let me save. Um, so for example, I move like here. And here the other way around. Like it's going up the wall. Nice. Now this will look cool, especially when you use motion blur. Okay, there was a jump. So I will fix that here. Mm, here. Clearly visible. So I would just match this. I think maybe the curve is fine. Yeah, curve is fine. <laughs> Yeah, when I was a kid, uh, uh, when I played with Lego, I always used to do those sounds to enhance the experience. <laughs> yeah, it was a... That was the laser. Explosion. Okay, so great. Now we have the fly-through. It looks pretty cool. And I've anyway, I think for today it's enough. Uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. My name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing.